Jeffrey and Paul McCulley, an adjunct professor at Georgetown's McDonough School and former PIMCO chief economist. Paul, always great to see you. Good to see you. Did we learn anything new from Powell in terms of the trajectory of rate cuts and or the, the landing point, the end point? No, I don't think we learned anything new today. We did get confidence that we heard right back at the last presser and also in his 60 Minutes interview uh, that the tightening cycle's over. He did a valedictory on that. An easing cycle is going to come. Uh, he's warm and fuzzy about that, but he's not urgent uh, about starting uh, the easing process. And I think there are a couple reasons. One, uh, the economy is still uh, quite uh, resilient, uh, if not strong. Uh, and I think he agrees with that. Uh, and we also have uh, the financial markets uh, quite exuberant. Uh, so both of those factors say later, not sooner. But I th it's a done deal that we're going to get an easing cycle. And June seems to be a, uh, uh, a date that uh, that works for the market, works for me. I think it'll work for the Fed. Uh, Hoya Sachs, uh, Professor, uh, Professor McCulley um, from uh, Ahoya. Um, I think you have a, an argument that the Fed's overly restrictive, but it's okay. Um, how about the offset of the financial conditions out there being remarkably easy? Um, is that making it, you know, an okay environment for the Fed to hang in there longer? And I realize we don't know what the tail is and what the dog is, but if equities were doing something different, uh, would you be more worried about the economy than you are today? I'm not sure if I'd be more worried about the economy because I think the equity market really is betting on the easing game, uh, and it does ease financial conditions along with the other components of financial conditions, and that supports the economy. And on one side, that gives the Fed time because the financial markets are already stimulating or supporting the economy. On the flip side, it requires the Fed to ease in the fullness of time to validate what the market has done. Or if you want to put it very simply, ultimately the Fed's got to reslope the yield curve. An inverted yield curve with easier financial conditions is not a completed project. Uh, you ultimately have to have a reslope yield curve. The Fed has to validate it. Uh, and assuming that they do, then we will have, you know, the soft landing scenario. Hey, Paul, what's going to be the tell? For, for me, it's they can't do QT and be cutting rates at the same time. There's too much push-pull there. So once we see them end QT, that gives me the sign that the next go around is the cut. Do you agree or why don't you agree? I actually disagree with that. I think that QT and the policy rate are separate variables. They're separate tools. And I don't think there's any impediment whatsoever to the Fed starting the easing process and continuing QE to QT. And I think QT is going to uh, be tapered uh, maybe even in March, but certainly this spring, so as that they're not at the pace that they've been for uh, the last 18 months.